Hey everyone, this is John Stearns from Zoom, and this is a demonstration of the Zoom digital signage solution that comes included with your Zoom Rooms entitlement. Uh, what's important to note is you only need a single Zoom Room license in your entire subscription um, to unlock the ability to deploy digital signage to an unlimited number of displays throughout your entire workplace, right? So a single Zoom Room license, you can deploy an unlimited number of displays uh, for digital signage uh, in the Zoom platform. So let me go ahead and walk you through how simple it is to actually set this up um, and to actually publish content and, and manage it, right? So I'm in here in my Zoom admin portal I'm under my Zoom rooms here. This is just a sandbox account that I maintain for my, my home lab here. I'm gonna jump into a specific device, the one that's behind me here. This is a Zoom room for touch. This happens to be a neat board. So I will pop right over to the digital signage tab here and just start to, to show you how simple it is to add content. Um, so when I go in here, um, I can choose specific files, videos, images, whatnot. Um, I can upload those as part of the content playlist. Uh, one of the other things I really like is the ability to incorporate URLs. So you could put certain parts of your website. Um, I typically use um, YouTube links for commercials and things like that as part of this. Um, so I'll add a couple of these URLs in. These are links to some of my other Zoom Rooms demos. Uh, so that's a, and that's a good one here. And then uh, another thing that you can do, if the digital signage is going to actually be running on a Zoom room, we pre-populate uh, some content here. So these are like how-to guides. So when the Zoom room is not being used, users walk in there, digital signage is running, showing them how to start a scheduled meeting, um, to launch a meeting, to share content, things like that. So that content is uh, pre-populated if you want to use it. Um, and then obviously, uh, your marketing communications teams and others can create content libraries and playlists and, and whatnot. Uh, but I wanted to just show you the simplicity of getting a, a digital signage content playlist up and running. So the first thing that I'll note here is you can go to this edit banner button and determine on every on this digital signage display, do you want this information to display across the top, the room name, the time, the, the sharing key. The sharing key is helpful uh, because every Zoom digital signage display, whether it's a full Zoom room or just a TV hanging up in a lobby or cafeteria, um, you have the ability to turn on this sharing key. And so what that does is that would allow anyone to walk up to that display um, and actually share content wirelessly to it. So, you know, digital signage displays can be running co uh, dynamic content playlists throughout the day. But if a team wants to walk up there and have a quick huddle, and uh, screen share to it, they have that ability to do that as well. So um, some of the internal facing digital signage, you may wanna turn that sharing key on for some of your external facing signage in lobbies and public space areas, you may wanna um, turn that capability off. And as we go down to the actual playlist, as you can see, it's very easy to reorder um, things that I've uploaded. So I have uh, image, video, image, video, image, reorder that um, to, to my liking. And then I can also go in there and determine how long do I want each portion of the playlist to play. So some of these videos are a little bit longer, so I'll go ahead and run them for you know, 30 seconds. I'll keep the images running for five seconds at a time. And of course, when this playlist is done, it will just loop back to the beginning. You can schedule this for um, certain parts of days, um, so there's a lot of functionality with that. Um, in this case, I am adding digital signage to a Zoom room, so there are some additional controls where I can determine when do I want signage content to start playing again after a meeting ends. So I'll put that down to zero for the purposes of this demo. And then on the flip side, um, you can determine how soon um, before a scheduled meeting is set to begin, do we want to stop that digital signage content? And that would be all manual. As soon as someone walks into a Zoom room and touches the Zoom room controller or the touch screen, um, when there's digital signage playing, it will always revert right back to the native Zoom room screen there. Uh, you can determine whether or not to play sound on each uh, device. So that's, that's nice and easy to do. So I'll go ahead and save that just so we can get the, um, the content uh, up and running there. The last thing to note here is if you wanted to split up the real estate of the screen, rather than just showing one image or one video on the screen at a time, uh, you, can, you can go into the video and content layout where now you have videos on one side and images on the other. So you could have commercials running on one side and you could have the, the cafeteria menu you know, on the, on the other side, things like that. Um, and then in this mode, you also have the ability to add a, a weather widget. 
So if I want to put the weather on there, you plug in your location, um, Celsius or Fahrenheit, and you can populate that as well. So lots of functionality here. Uh, as you can see, the digital signage has now started playing behind me. Um, so it's very quick to go ahead and hit save and publish this. And then the digital signage kicks in on these displays. Now I showed you the simplicity of um, updating and editing and adding uh, content to a specific device. Um, obviously you can do that centrally for groups of devices or device profiles. So if you wanted to publish digital signage across the entire organization, you don't have to go to every device to do that. You can group these together and you can send playlists to certain displays um, and other content to different displays. So you could, you could uh, differentiate between public space lobbies that your guests will see and internal displays. You could have different content playing to different buildings or cities or offices and stuff like that. So very granular in terms of what you can do there. Um, you also don't have to make someone a full Zoom administrator if they're just going to be editing and managing content playlists. Um, so if you need to entitle your uh, marketing or communications teams or human resources, um, you can essentially just give them access to editing uh, digital signage content and you can even dictate to which group of displays do you want to enable them? And they wouldn't be full-blown Zoom administrators that would see your Zoom meetings, phone rooms, licensing, et cetera. Um, a couple of things to note. Uh, so beyond being a dy dynamic digital signage content player, um, you also have the ability to wirelessly screen share to these devices. And then also when you have a town hall or an all hands meeting or a big Zoom webinar or meeting, you can also broadcast that to any digital signage display. And that includes um, you know, TVs that are hanging up that are not full-blown Zoom rooms, right? You can run Zoom rooms on any existing TV or display that has an HDMI input. I will link the hardware requirements for that, essentially just a Windows uh, PC stick or Mac mini uh, that can run the digital signage application. Um, so very cost-effective way to deploy digital signage, especially since you only need the one single Zoom room license. Uh, that will allow you to deploy digital signage throughout the entire organization. Um, so uh, thank you very much for sticking around for the demo. Lots more Zoom Room uh, demo videos to come. And if you have any questions on digital signage, feel free to reach out in the comments. Thank you so much.